Hey, welcome to gaseous stoichiometry. You've already learned stoichiometry, so this is going to seem very familiar to you. Okay, so we're going to talk about stoichiometry, where we use our mole-to-mole -mole ratios from our balanced equations, but we're going to do it specifically for reactions that have gases. Okay, previously we got our moles from grams, or we got our moles from molecules or atoms. Or we may have gotten our moles from liters if our gas was at STP. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll review this one first because it's really gaseous stoichiometry because it's stoichiometry with a gas. And then we'll look and see what happens when we're not at STP. So let's think, for instance, about the reaction between aluminum and sulfuric acid. Okay, this is a single replacement reaction that hopefully you recognize. The aluminum kicks out the hydrogen and it makes aluminum sulfate. And it makes hydrogen gas. Okay, and we're going to say what happens if 5 grams of aluminum reacts with an excess of H2SO4. We want to know how many liters of H2 is formed at STP. So how many liters of H2 gas at STP? Since we're at STP, we're going to be able to go ahead and use 22.4. All right, so let's slide down here a little bit. So we'll start with, make sure we can see our coefficients up here. I'm going to start with 5 grams of aluminum. Okay, we're going to do some dimensional analysis and change grams of Al to moles of Al. And then we'll do our mole ratio moles of Al to moles of the thing we're looking for, so moles of H2. And then I'm going to go ahead and change moles of H2 to liters of H2. So one mole of aluminum is 26.98 grams from the periodic table. We have a 3 to 2 ratio and one mole of any gas at STP is 22.4 liters. So if you do that out, you'll get 6.23 liters of hydrogen gas. This is a problem that you could have done already. There was probably a problem very similar to that on the test that we just took. All right, let's use this equation again, but let's try a problem when we're not at STP. So let's say, for instance, that I have 2 grams of aluminum that's going to react with an excess of H2SO4. And this time I want to know how many liters of hydrogen will form. But we're going to make it something other than STP. So how many liters of H2 form at... 27 degrees Celsius and 750 millimeters of mercury. Okay, and we'll give that three sig figs. So I'm going to start as I did before with two grams of aluminum. I'm going to change my grams of aluminum to moles of aluminum. And I'm going to change my moles of aluminum to moles of hydrogen. So this first part is the same, 26.98, 3 to 2. And can I go ahead and change moles of hydrogen to liters of hydrogen? I can't, because I can't use, I can't use 22.4 this time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to calculate my moles of hydrogen. Okay, and now that I have my moles of hydrogen, 
how could I figure out how many liters that is if I have moles, okay, and temperature and pressure? Hopefully you're thinking we should use PivNert. So here it is. We're going to go ahead and plug in PivNert and we're going to solve for volume. So your pressure is 750, but we're going to have to change it to ATM, so it's really 750 over 760, all right? That's your conversion times your volume. Here's your moles of hydrogen, good old trusty R, and your temperature, which is 27 plus 273 is 300. If you do this out, your volume is 2.78 liters. So now you've done some real stoichiometry using gases, not at STP. Okay, let's try a couple more. So you can see the different kinds that you might run into. All right. So which go ahead and maybe try another reaction here. For instance, maybe some nitrogen gas reacts with three hydrogen gas to make two ammonia gas. So these are all gases. And we're going to say that 200 and 50 milliliters of N2 gas at 0 0.890 ATM and 25 degrees Celsius is going to react with an excess of hydrogen. Okay, so no limiting reactant or anything. Okay, and we want to know how many grams of ammonia is formed. So this is kind of the opposite of the one we just did. Oops, it's not much of a D, but you know. So in this case, we're actually going to start with PivNert. And we're going to use that to find our moles of nitrogen, because that's what we have, the volume of nitrogen and the pressure of nitrogen. So we're going to find our moles of nitrogen, and then we'll do some stoichiometry over to grams. So pressure, 0 0.890. Our volume, got to change it to liters, right? So 0 0.250 moles are 0 0.0821, and our temperature, 25 plus 273, 298. So our moles, if we do this out, is 0 0.00909 moles of nitrogen. And now to finish the problem, I have to go from moles of nitrogen to moles of ammonia. So I'm going to do my mole ratio, moles of N2 to moles of NH3. And then I'm going to go ahead and change moles to grams. Okay, moles to grams of NH3. And we'll see what that equals. All right, so if we look at our equation, our coefficients are going to be 2 over 1. And ammonia weighs 17.04 from the periodic table. And this comes out to be 0. 0 0.310 grams. Oops, and you're all set. Okay. All right, let's do one more. All right. Let's pick zinc and have it react with hydrochloric acid to make single replacement reaction. So zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. Okay, and the only twist that I'm going to add to this one is we're going to collect our hydrogen gas over water. Okay, so remember there's an extra step there. Alright, so we're going to say that 6.5 grams of zinc is going to react with an excess of HCl. Alright, 
and we want to know what is the volume of the hydrogen gas collected over water at 28 degrees Celsius and 785 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so the point of this question is we're going to start with this grams and we're going to turn it convert it doing some stoichiometry to moles of hydrogen okay and then since we collected it over water that means we're gonna have to take our pressure and subtract the water vapor okay so let's do one step at a time 6.5 grams of zinc okay by now I think stoichiometry is getting to be kind of an easy habit so grams of zinc to moles of zinc and then we're going to do moles of zinc and we're going to change that to moles of hydrogen okay and we're going to stop there so 1 65.39 and our ratio is 1 to 1 so we're going to make 0.0994 moles of hydrogen and I want to know what volume this would be after I dried it so we're gonna go and we're at 28 degrees Celsius so we're gonna go to our vapor pressures of water we're gonna find 28 degrees and we're gonna see that it is 28.3 millimeters of mercury okay so let's remember 28.3 all right, so we're going to take our pressure and we're going to say 785 minus 28.3 and we'll get 756.7 millimeters of mercury. Okay, and then why don't we go ahead and change that to ATM since that's what we need for PIPNERT. Okay, so 1 and 760. So this gives us 0.996 ATM. Okay, so now we're going to slide down a little bit here and we're going to plug into our ideal gas law. Okay, so PV equals NRT. Okay, our pressure is 0.996 ATM. We're looking for the volume our moles is from up above here okay so 0 0.0994 0 0.0821 and our temperature was 28 and 28 plus 273 is 301 so if we do all of that out we get a volume of 2.47 liters and those are the kinds of problems that you might see doing gaseous stoichiometry, okay? When you come to class tomorrow, we'll do some more problems in groups and we'll make sure you get enough practice at this, okay?